Hi, how are you guys? Uh, happy Sunday. Sorry, I will just quickly type the title of our session today. The heightened hardships. How are you? How it's been going? Uh, hardships. You know, today we have a very special episode. Uh, actually, it's the 14th episode of Talks with Natalia. Uh, you've been with us, with me since uh, four months almost. So I see actually more than four months. So uh, thank you for that. And I hope you were able to learn something as well as much as I've been learning. I was just, you know, I'm so stressed actually. <laughs> I feel like I have a first guest today. I mean, the guest for the first time, it's almost like I had I, uh, my first interview with Ubi Franklin. But um, let me just quickly of interracial. Interracial. Uh, marriage with Yoruba Pekin. Yoruba Pekin. I'm posting. Okay, pin the comment. Yes. So, um, hello, how are you? Uh, my name is Natalia Mufutawa, and I would like to welcome you officially to the 14th and the last episode of this season of Talks with Natalia. Today we have a super special guest. Uh, his name is Wally Mufutau. Uh, so we have, we share the, the, the same last name. It's my husband. Um, he's a serial entrepreneur and uh, Yoruba uh, culture influencer. So uh, we will talk about, um, you know, pluses and minuses of being in the international, uh, interracial marriage or relationship. Uh, just let me quickly greet uh, you guys. Oh, hello. How are you? Uh, oh, so many of you guys. They call me Owalobi. Hi. Okansola. Hey. Martina. Hey. Pretty Adelao. Hi. How are you? Uh, let me see. Oh my God, I'm really stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if uh, if your Pekin is already here. Okay. No African time. At least I hope that the internet connection will be okay. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm fine. Are you? I'm fine. Um, thank you so much for accepting my invitation to the final episode of season one of Talks with Natalia. No problem. Uh, my wife, my wife is a Yibo also, so I, I just have to grant your request. Okay. No, ahala. Yeah. So for those who don't know you yet, uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, Adeumi Walyu Mufutu, who are the serial entrepreneur and uh, Yoruba culture influencer. So if you could share a little bit with us background, what part of Nigeria are you? And please remember that you are talking to thousands of people, so I appreciate <laughs> <And> honest. <laughs> there are some things to yourself. If, if you want to talk. Yeah. Wait, I okay. And just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know why all these preambles and uh, uh, it, 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 this kind of uh, question, you know, that's how I call it. But um, it's okay, don't worry. My wife, like I said earlier, my wife is also from Poland. Okay. It's the same country where you, where you come from, so don't worry. I will be very, very, very nice. You, okay, yeah. uh, my name is Mufuta Wadiwumi Waliu. Uh, I'm from Shaki, uh, in the area of Okiogunoyo State, Nigeria. Um, right now, I'm living in Finland. Uh, I come from a, a polygamous family. My dad had um, four wives. Okay. And uh, I attended uh, uh, St. Paul An Anglican School. I'm sorry to uh, Do you intend okay. four wives as well? Oh, well, I'm still, I'm thinking about that. Okay. I'm thinking about that, so let's see. Okay. You know, if, 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 if Islam says if you have the power, you know, if you have the power and if you are going to treat them equally, Something I've been discussing with my wife, you know. So okay. we are we are still discussing about it. Let's see how, how this whole thing plays out. So, you know, maybe 
Let's see. Oh, Wahala. Okay. So, I attended uh, for my primary school education. I attended two schools, uh, LA uh, Local Authority uh, School, uh, Taba, it's Ale Taba Shaki, and um, uh, St. Paul Anglican School in Ibadan. And then uh, for my junior secondary school education, I attended um, International Muslim College. Uh, and then for my senior secondary school, I attended uh, Government College Apata in Ibadan. Then I, for my university education, I studied uh, computer engineering at uh, the prestigious Ladoke Computer Institute of Technology uh, in Ubu Moscow. And then after that, I came to Finland. So that's basically something I can tell you about my about my background. So hold on, please. I I have children here. Oh, their mom their mom is on the program, and I have kids here, so I need to take care of them. Okay, I go away. Please please hold on. Yeah. So, that's it. I mean, that's the little thing I can tell you about myself. Okay. What about, uh, so you mentioned that you are from Shaki. Yeah. And as far as I know, Shaki is, um, Shaki is very popular in Nigeria because of the pots. So the cooking, that, uh, they say that all uh, Nigerians cook uh, from the, in the Shaki pot. So um, why, what are the other reasons why Shaki is the best city in Oyo State, Nigeria? Well, it's like we are the food basket of the nation. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, agricultural products uh, come from Shaki. So, and then we make the best pot in Nigeria, of course. If you have attended any Owambe at all in Nigeria, and you have eaten the jollof rice, I can bet it that you are eating the jollof rice is made out of uh, shaki, shaki pot. So, and apart from that, we are very good in agriculture, hunting, and some other good things like that. So uh, the former Minister of uh, Communication in Nigeria was from Shaki, and we have a lot of prejudiced people who also actually come from Shaki as well. So. Okay, so thank you for that. So you are currently based in Finland, that's true, yeah. So why did you choose Finland and other countries? So oh, thank you. Well, so while I was in, uh, in Lautech, I think uh, around 2003, so because I've witnessed a lot of uh, uh, strikes and disruptions when it comes to the educational system in Nigeria. So sometimes because that you are supposed to uh, due for like four years, then it turns out that you are going to finish it in six years because of the strike. And, uh, you know, I just decided that, okay, but maybe the best thing for me would be to uh, study abroad. And um, we started looking for schools. Mm -hmm. uh, I applied to, I remember I applied to the University of Leeds around that time with one of my friends, uh, his name is Ahmed, he was my classmate in Lausanne around that time. So I attended, um, I mean, I applied for studies at the University of Leeds, and I was given admission. But unfortunately, I was denied a visa. Uh, the, the story behind the visa thing uh, is, is, is a very big thing also, which I will actually talk about during the course of this program. So, and then after that, um, Ahmed had one guy who was actually already in Finland around that time. He was studying in Finland, and he was the one that introduced us to uh, study in Finland, and then we applied, we were given admission, uh, we went to do uh, entrance examination in, uh, in Ghana, and oh. actually, so I applied for another degree while I was studying in Lautech. So I was doing my fourth degree in Lautech, and I applied for another fourth degree to come and study abroad, because I was aware of the fact that uh, if I really want to do my master's, I have to kind of like, you know, come in somehow, because when you graduate in Nigeria, your certificate is not ready immediately. So you have to wait for like two or three years, for example, before they issue your certificate. And I just think that, okay, once I'm here studying already, it will be much more easier for me to switch. So, and that is exactly what, what I did. Hmm. Um, so that, that's how I, I came to Finland in 2007. Uh, the, the UK visa thing that I applied for, it later haunts me. Uh, when I got to Finland, because um, happened. <laughs> thank you. So I applied for another another visa to visit uh, to visit the United Kingdom when I was in Finland, 
and uh, I mean, in my in my passport, there was a stamp there already that I've been denied visa before in Nigeria. So, and when I was processing my visa application to come to Finland, I contacted um, an agent. I contacted an agent uh, to help me, you know, kind of like you know, uh, manage all the paperwork and and every other thing that uh, has to do with the with the, with the traveling. And he told me that uh, if you are going to Finland, you should let us do something about this stamp on your passport. You know. And I said, okay, no problem, let's do that. So in the end, they actually erased the stamp on the passport. This is not something I'm supposed to be saying on here, but you know. I actually, yes, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I just want people to learn from this. So every, every question that you'll be asking me, if there's any point of, um, or if there's any point in the question where people could actually learn from, I will try to expand a little bit so that they can they can yeah, we they can learn from it. The purpose so, of our interview today. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So then, when I got to Finland, then I applied for visa. The stamp in my passport was already erased, so you know, clean. There was no stamp there anymore. And then I went to apply for visa. And during the interview day, the is what I would call. Uh, bad day, devil drink water. You know, in, in Yoruba language, we say, Ojoburuku is from my experience. What is it? Oloburuku is like naughty bad day. Ojoburuku is a bad day. Bad, bad yes. day. Bad day, devil drink water. So, during the, during the course of the interview, when I the, the visa... May I mention the other words that I know, uh, bad words in Yoruba, or shouldn't I? Don't, don't write this one down. Because okay. your husband, your, your, your husband will get angry, and I don't okay. want your husband to get angry, so don't write something like this down. Hmm? No, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. So then, when when the visa officer asked me if I've ever been denied visa before, I was I, I mean I told him confidently that no, I've never even actually applied for UK visa before. Because of course, if I if I would have told him that uh, I've applied before. The, the stamp is no more in my passport. You get the point now. The stamp is no more there. So how do I prove to him that I've actually applied before? So I told the visa officer that I've never been, I've never applied for visa before. He said okay, but he was actually sure because I, he, he saw it already in the system that I've applied before. So I told him no, 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 no. I've, I've never applied before. The lady asked me three times, and you, at the third time. I just told, told her that, why are you stressing me? You know, why are you stressing me? With confidence though, Niger like confidence. Ah, you, don't, you don't have to stress me now. I've told you the, the truth. So she said, okay. And then she told me the reason why she was asking me again and again was because she wanted me to come out straight. That I've applied before and I, I, they have denied me before because they were actually making a new rule. And the rule, will, they will start using it from that particular application of mine. That's when they will start using the rule. So if I had come out straight to her that I've applied before and they have denied me, maybe they, they would have done something. But now I lied. Misrepresentation, I lied on my, on my application. And because of that, they banned me from going to UK for 10 years. You know, mm. I'm saying this because I want people to learn from it. You see, those agents don't have anything they want to offer you. Some of them have never even, they have never even traveled out of Nigeria before. But they will tell you how the airport in Amsterdam or how the airport in the thing can look like. So this was my experience when I, when I came to Finland. I just wanted, wanted to add that one. Mm -hmm. So, and I believe I told you the reason why I come to Finland, through a friend of a friend. Yeah, but I believe everything in life happens for a reason. So there was a reason why you, you you know in the end you studied in finland and you moved to finland not to the uk that's true Maybe it was a very special reason but anyway yeah. so uh i guess what when, when what was the month when you moved from uh, nigeria to um finland? well so when 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 uh i got admission to study in finland i was actually writing my final final paper in laute so the school resumed, I think, around uh, September, August, September. But uh, my final exam was in November. So I had to wait behind and finish uh, my, my final exam before I, before I traveled. Mm. I, I, I wrote my last paper on the, on the 8th of, of November, 2007. 
and I traveled to Finland on the 11th of November, 2007. November. One small, one small bag, with one very small bag. No uh, food, nothing. But, uh, so November, so uh, it was mine, what was the weather like? Like 25? Well, it was, it was, no, it was rainy, it was rainy. You know, there is, there is global warming and the weather is changing over the time, so no, I, in November I, and that time, it was, it was really, really rainy. It was really, really rainy. I was beaten by the rain from, right from the bus station to the hostel. Now, what I'm thinking about is that the temperature difference, like uh, Finland is well known. Well, cold. well, yeah, I, I have actually studied a lot about Finland. I knew it from that moment that it's a very cold country, you know, mm -hmm. and I was actually prepared, I mean, to face every situation that I'm going to encounter here. So it, was, I was, it wasn't really difficult because it was, it, I think it was during spring. If I remember correctly, it was during spring, so it wasn't really cold. It wasn't really cold. But then, when the winter came, uh, it was very, very serious. It was very serious because when I was studying, I was working at the same time. So, and uh, every day I had to ride bicycle for like around 15 to 20 kilometers. I mean, navigating from one walk to another. In the winter, you know, with like two to three sets of jacket, hand glove, face mask. And during that, you know, then when you are riding bicycle and the wind is blowing on your face, you know, where the water is coming out of your eyes and it, it, you know, it, it will freeze immediately. This is how bad it was. I think it was around minus 20 or even above minus 20, 25 that time. So it was really, really a very difficult situation. But in the end, I made it. It wasn't and, easy. And how many years it's been now? Uh, well, I was. I'm talking about uh, between 2000 and uh, between 2008, 2012, because I started my own company in 2012. So between 2008, 2012, I was studying and then I was working, and I didn't have a car, so I had to ride bicycle here and there. So it was it was really really difficult. But in the end, when you have the Niger spirit in you, you will conquer every situation that you encounter. That's what I always tell people from Nigeria, actually, that if you, if you survived in Nigeria, you can survive. The same with us Poles. Uh, uh, it's, it's so much different in Finland. You, you, no matter what, you have always a support from your government. And it is uh, compulsory to have an apartment here. As which is uh, not the case uh, back in Poland or uh, in Nigeria. But anyway, uh, I hope that, uh, I mean, I'm very happy to hear again your story. I've heard the story so many times, but uh, it's always interesting. Uh, if I may ask, if I may ask, from who did you hear the story? From who did you hear the story? Huh? No, angels. Yes, angels. Ah, okay. They whisper okay. in my ear. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. So, um, if you could compare uh, living in Finland, uh, because I started to talk a little bit about it, uh, yeah. life in Finland and life in Nigeria, what, uh, what would you say? Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, there is a significant difference when it comes to living in Nigeria and living here. But at the end of it, it still depends on how you want to live your life. I'm happy here. But I believe that uh, there are some people living in Nigeria that are far, far more happier than people that are even mm -hmm. living in Finland. So, you know, when you think about uh, the basic need of life, electricity, uh, water, and gas, and some other things, you have everything readily available for you here. The social system, the welfare benefit is there to take care of you when you have any issue or when, when, when you need them. Uh, these are things that we don't actually have in Nigeria. So, you know, I mean, if I have to compare living in Nigeria and living in Finland, I think I, I, I love it here. I really, really love it here. So there are a lot of things that I have here that I don't have back home in Nigeria. And besides, I have my immediate family here in Finland now, and my extended mm -hmm. family are still in Nigeria. But it, it's good here. I love it here. I love it here. Are you at any point to move to Nigeria? But... Ah, well... I've been discussing with my with my wife, mm -hmm. and I mean this 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 was um, my wife's idea. 
Chris, hold on, Chris. Qui est ça? Spider-Man. C'est Yacoub. Non, c'est Spider-Man. Yacoub. Tu vas en faire Spider-Man? Oui, c'est ça. Tu vas en faire Spider-Man? Ok, ok, je vais te dire. Mon chef, on le voit, il y a un peu de temps. Mais il y a un peu de temps. Il y a un peu de temps. The Spider-Man break. No, no, don't worry. Okay, thank you. So you are planning to move to Nigeria? I'm not actually saying that. But uh, my wife, my wife actually wants us to move back to Nigeria at some point. So she she loves Nigeria so much, and then uh, she we have a lot of uh, business ideas that we are planning to introduce to the Nigerian market. So maybe one, maybe at some point we move to Nigeria. I don't know yet, but okay. it's my wife's idea that probably be at some point that we should move to Nigeria. So. Okay. Okay, so let's see how it goes. So talking about uh, the wife, how, how did you meet your wife? Hmm. Ah, well, <laughs> it was in 2000 and... I'm listening, yes. You, so, okay, ah, because you will learn from this also. Ah, oh, oh, thank you. Ah, and then you can, you can apply all the knowledge and wisdom that you will learn from this program when you get home to your husband. Uh, so no. let me just tell you how yes. I met my wife, okay? Um, Okay, make uh -huh. it up. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I met my wife in 2010. Uh, a friend, she was a friend of a friend. Okay, my friend was supposed to pick her up from the airport. And uh, at that point, at that time, my friend was already in Nigeria. And then he contacted me so that I can help, I can help him to, to pick my then stranger, but now my wife. Mm -hmm. So I I picked that I picked that up from from the airport. She was talking a lot. Oh my God, this woman can talk, eh? Hey. <laughs> she was she was talking and talking and talking and talking. And me, I was ah, me, I was thinking about how I'm going to get to work after I drop her off at the at the train station. But she was just talking and talking and talking. And then at the end of it, she just to show to show her appreciation. She offered me a uh, coffee, which I denied. Oh. I want to ask, yes, I denied. Ah. I want to ask you one question. You, you are, you be on your boat, When you see, when you see an handsome man like this, an handsome man, good looking man like this, are you not going to, 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 to fall for him? Hmm? Uh, I'm right. asking you. Now? Now or you ah. are? Ten, ten years it, ago. Well, 10 years ago or now, are you not going to fall for a man like me? When you see an handsome man like this, are you not going to fall for him? Sometimes I have to look twice, so it depends. Ah, but my wife didn't look twice that time. Oh. She fell immediately. Uh, she fell immediately oh, when she, she, saw, she saw an handsome guy. So, but anyway, <laughs> she, she, she invited me for a cup of coffee. Oh, wait. And, Think. Who told you you are handsome? What in the wahala? Share wa ba 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 mama. Hey, ah, uh, me ah, uh, hey, okay, no, no wahala. Yes, I'm sorry. No wahala. Okay, yes. <laughs> no problem, no problem, no problem. You are one sided now. You are one sided. Yeah. You are the anchor of the program, and at the same time, you are reading comment that is a, a kind of throwing jab at me. No problem. I'm protecting. But anyway. Yes. You, you are protecting what? You are protecting what? First of my guests. <laughs> no problem, no problem. But one thing is this: I'm putting this to you. When you see you yourself, when you see an handsome man like me, you will fall for him. You don't have any option. I think so too. Thank you very much for for for, for admitting that. But anyway, she offered what? me a cup of coffee. She offered me a cup of coffee. I denied. I because I was actually it wasn't because I didn't want to spend time with her, but because I was working. I actually left work to pick her up at uh, the airport and then drop her at the train station. And from there, I had to, you know, go to work again. So, but in the end, we share a phone number. We kept contacting each other on the phone. And uh, at some point, I think we realized that we, the, the chemistry was there. So we arranged, we arranged a meeting. 
and uh, <laughs> this is funny. So I was I was going to after like one year of, of dating because she she was living at the northern part of Finland, so so far away from where I'm, I'm I was living at the southwest area and she was living at the north. So it's like it's like probably close to a thousand kilometers in I between us. Hundreds, yes. So so you know it took us a lot of time before we were able to agree about meeting each other. And then when we agreed about it, I offered our hotel that I will book the hotel, you know, and then it was like, ah, so if you book the hotel, now we are going to stay in the same hotel room, Abby. Ah. And I was like, what do you expect now? Ah, child like that guy, why are you not going to sleep in the same hotel? And she said, no. And that's when I... <laughs> Is that no? Uh, I was like, so that... innocent. I was so innocent. It's been ten years. No. I, maybe I would have said something. I, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about my wife. Don't don't read my own. Because you are talking about yourself now. If my story is, no, is if it looks a little bit like your own story, then you talk for yourself. Now I'm talking about my wife. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Please don't go there. Uh -huh. I'm talking about my wife. So, you know, in the end, she just told me, no, 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 we are not going to do it like that. That uh, if we are going to meet, uh, we will sleep in a separate room. And one thing is this, that's when I realized that ah, this woman, she, she, she has she has the Niger woman brain. So what exactly is this now? Ah, we are meeting for the first time, you are, you are telling me that we are going to sleep in different rooms. But in the end, anyway, I think we call it off. We didn't meet again. <laughs> Because we were not able to agree about it. So, and after like uh, maybe one and a half years, then we were able to meet, and then we got to know each other. And then she went back to, to Rovaniemi, where she was studying, to, to finish her study. Then moved back to Poland for some time, and then, you know, then moved to Finland. And since then, we have been living happily together. Okay. So, from your experience, uh, what, in the, what is the difference between Oibo, uh, which are the uh, non-Africans, uh, versus mm -hmm. Nigerian women? Hmm. Different, Abby. Uh, let's do Nigerian versus Nigerian. Okay, the question is, let, let me rephrase the question. Yes. You, you are asking about the difference between Oibo women and Nigerian yes. women. Yes. Okay? Well, I don't know about some other people, but if someone is married to, to the kind of woman that I am married to, okay. I, can't, I can't see any difference. Oh, really? Uh, I can't see any difference. Woman will always be woman. Woman will always be woman. From Nigeria to Finland to Poland, woman will always be woman. The only thing that differentiates women is about the culture and tradition of where they come from. You know, apart from that, every woman wants to be treated well. Every woman wants to be adored. You know, every woman wants to be respected in the relationship. So, I mean, white or black, women have the same anatomy when it comes to the way they think and the way they behave. I have few Nigerian friends who are married to Nigerians. And when, sometimes when they tell me about their experience, and, you know, when you aggregate this whole behavioral thing together, you just realize that uh, it, it's the same. You know, sometimes when they tell me about their experience at home, and then I will just think about my experience at home with my wife also, it's the same. So, me, I don't really see any difference when it comes to women. Generally, all over the world, women are the same. One thing is clear, okay? If you treat an African woman better. If you treat an African woman well, you will get an Oyembo woman out of her. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if there are some things you want, you want, you would have wanted from, from a woman who, who is from the same tribe or the same race as you are, you want that kind of thing from your Oyembo woman. If you treat her well, you will get an African woman out of your Oyembo woman. Okay? And if you treat your African women very well, if you treat them well, uh, then you will also get an Onyibo woman out of your African woman. Normally, 
Every man wants to be respected. It's very, very important. So, if you treat your Oyibo woman very well, generally, Oyibo has this mentality of equality. Equality in terms of uh, obligation and responsibility. Do you understand? Not in terms of respect. In terms of respect, it has to be reciprocal. Okay? So, if you treat your Oyibo woman very well, you get the kind of respect that you deserve as an African man, because when it comes to respect, it's very paramount when, when you're talking about African men generally. I don't know about European men. Okay? And uh, when you... The respect, because I think it's super important, and if we are talking about the interracial marriage and uh, now, especially with Nigerian men, this is number one. I would say respect comes first and the food comes second. From my experience. Well, from your experience, I think you are right. Now I know that you are really married to a Nigerian man mm. because of the way you talk. Now you you know, we are, meet, we are meeting each other for the first time. Uh -huh. So uh, I have to say it as it is. So, uh, now I can, I, can, I can confirm that, uh, that you, are, you, you are married to, to a, 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 Nigerian, a, Nigerian, a Nigerian man. <laughs> so, you know, that's it. That's it. Women, to me, women, in my own dictionary, women all over the world are the same. Women all over the world are the same. I can't really differentiate them. I can't differentiate them. One thing that plays a very important role uh, when you are trying to differentiate women is their culture and tradition. You know, over the time, our culture and tradition will fabricate the way we reason and the way we think about different things. And that is, where, that is the reason why when you are, when you are married to an European woman or to a Yibo woman, uh, you are expected to play your role in terms of 50-50 of a thing. Mm. But in my own house, we don't do 50-50 because my woman is also very traditional, just like Nigerian. Oh, so, really? you know, we don't, we don't, ah, we don't do 50-50. The woman loves money now. You don't know. I wonder how you, you, how, how you, you, what is your relationship with your own husband? But my own woman, ah, we don't do 50-50 in this family. Hey, no 50-50. Women love money, eh? No, I don't, <laughs> in general, I, I don't think that for women it's money. It's like how many purses you can buy, how many pairs of shoes, where you can travel, you know, this kind of. We don't think, uh, I, I, I mean, it depends. The way our brain works is a little bit different. I agree, I agree with you. Because yeah. if I don't agree, maybe it's possible that you know my wife now and you will tell her some certain things. And I, I want to sleep at home tonight. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just down. Please, please hold on. I, I have my boys here, like I told you earlier. Yes. My wife is somewhere having a program, and I have to deal with three boys at home. So permit me to, to deal with them, okay? Spider-Man. Yeah, okay, okay. 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 Okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you. Ah, so you can even speak Yoruba. Ah, hey, no, this must be no. Everybody, here. Ah, thank you. Yaku, is he playing? So, is that? So, is that? Okay. <laughs> you see, what did, what did happen when men day for house? Anyway, yes. Talk, talk, for your own, talk for your own family and your husband. Don't talk about me and, you know, okay? <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay, uh, now I'm back. Yeah, so we were talking about Oibo versus um, Nigerian women. So what about uh, like uh, men and women responsibilities in the relationship? You discussed a little bit about the money management and stuff, but uh, can you can you like elaborate a little bit on that? Are you talking about my own my own marriage, my own relationship, no. or in general? Do you, yeah, normally, when, uh, um, 
when there is a wife and the, and the husband, how do they share the responsibilities? Well, like I said earlier on, when I was a child, I, I, I remember and I know for sure that uh, it's the responsibility of men to provide the money, shelter for their family. And it is the responsibility of the wife, the woman, to make sure that the money are being, you know, the expenses and financial finances are being managed properly. So, and uh, we didn't have anything like 50-50 then. You know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was actually, they, they, they would say that it's hundred, like the men yeah, would do everything. But I don't see it that way. Because if you say that men are, the, are responsible for 100% of the responsibility, uh, so what do you call the time that the, the, the mother put in preparing the kids for school, you know, managing the money, cooking and some other things? I think it's work 100% also. So in, in African setting, in Nigerian setting, uh, I would also say it's 50-50. Because if you want to quantify the, the monetary input from men, you know, you can as well say that women have the same, the same, the same quantity also of input because they will make sure they, they, they carry the kids for, for nine months, give back to the kids, prepare them for school, nurture them, carry them on their back for, for, for more than three years, make sure the food is ready and some other things like that. So I think we are just there. I, when it comes to responsibility, I don't think responsibility should be gender related. I think we are there for each other. We are there to help each other. We are there to support each other. So in Nigeria, things are changing also. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think men, women are also kind of like, you know, uh, taking part when it comes to financial responsibility at home. We have seen a situation whereby uh, the wife is earning more than the husband. You know, and then she will have to pay her own quota when it comes to the support of the family. And in, in our own family here, uh, well, when it comes to we, we have we have we have an equation because I don't I don't know what I would say that will that will, that will not let me sleep at home tonight because the way I'm looking at you. We talk about comparison to Finland. Uh, and let me talk, because the way I'm looking at you, it's possible that you know my wife and you will tell her something. I don't want to be thrown out of this house tonight. So yes. I think it's enough like that. Okay. I think it's enough. <laughs> so you wanted to ask me something? <laughs> yeah, because uh, from my experience, I mean, uh, couples in Finland, um, I mean, uh, people in general, married, uh, married like, Typical Finnish marriages, they're a little bit different than, uh, than typical Nigerian marriages, for example. So what, what are the differences from your perspective? Yeah, the marriage? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I think when you think about Finland and you think about women here, these... Uh, Equality of the thing. But, but women in Finland, um, well, let's work with talk general. Okay, rephrase your question because I didn't get that. Rephrase your question. <laughs> okay, again, about, uh, uh, about um, uh, Finnish relationships versus Nigerian relationships. What are the differences or are there similarities? How do you see it? Okay. When, when you are seeing a Finnish lady for the first time, if she likes you, okay, if she likes you, then she can do anything with you. They believe in this first time chemistry. And um, I didn't have that kind of experience. In Nigeria, you have, to, you have to work very well before you get a woman. You know, you have to woo her for some time. You, have to, ah, you really need to show passion that you, really, you are going to take care of her. And you really need to woo her, okay? But in Finland, there's nothing like, uh, uh, ah, I want to be with you, or can we be in a relationship, or can you be my girlfriend, you know. You know, it, it works out naturally. Once the chemistry is there, it's there. And that's it. So when I, when I 
<laughs> and I think this, this thing is very common. It's not about Finnish women alone. I think it's, it's very common when it comes to European women generally or white women. That uh, I remember the first time I told my, my wife, then girlfriend, now my wife, when I told her that I love her. It's a normal thing in Nigeria to tell a woman when you... I mean, we, we, we don't really even attach any kind of um, uh, weight to that statement. You know, men, men use it. It's, it's a normal thing to tell a woman, I love you. Okay? And when I told my, my, my girlfriend then that I love her, she, was, she wasn't talking to me for like one week ago. I called her phone. She, she, never, she didn't pick up. Yeah, Why? The, how, long, how long after you met her, you told her that you love her? I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it was like around three months ago. <laughs> Or maybe not even up to that. Uh, uh, I think it was like one month ago. Uh, how, how would you know? Were you there? Okay. You were not there now. That's what I was told. Who, who, who told you? Who? Ah, Madam, eh, I'm, I'm beginning to be a little bit uh, suspicious about, about you. The story needs to be straight, okay? The... Ah. Anyway, no wahala. <laughs> so I told her that I love her, and she, she wasn't picking up my call again for like, I think for like one, one week she didn't pick my call. Why? Uh, Too much, or I think it was like a weekend. Yeah, madam, you are you are too much. Oh. Okay. Ah, kilo de gun. Anyway, she wasn't picking up my call, but in the end, she made me realize the reason why she was not picking my call because she said if I would tell her that I love her, I need to. Uh, it, it has to come from the bottom of my heart, and she doesn't think that uh, being a relation, being in a relationship for two, one to two months. That you can tell each other that you really love each other, and that it takes time, and I, I, I think I understood the reason why she said that. So that that's the difference between when when it comes to relationships uh, between um, in, in in European setting and in Nigerian setting. I think I think that that's the difference. So you mentioned that your wife is from uh, from Poland, so. Um... <laughs> Okay. Are there, like, do you see many similarities or di uh, like differences um, ah. you know, from Poland versus um, Nigerian couples? Ah. Many similarities though. I think the Polish people have Nigerian DNA in them. And I'm being honest. Okay. Okay. I'm being honest. Uh, I think, I think uh, Polish people have, have uh, a lot of Nigerian DNA in them. And I would say probably maybe that is the reason why, uh, why we are still married, while we are still together, uh, because um, generally Polish people are very traditional. They are like Nigerians. I normally tell my friends that uh, Polish people are like uh, the, the, the Oyibo fashion of Nigerians. Mm. You know, you guys are very cultural. I mean, a lot of things that I see in my wife is something that I would see in my mom. Okay. I'm not, you, you understand what I'm saying now? It's something oh. that I would see in my mom. So Anyway, yes. Uh, why are you touching your heart? I'm not talking about you now. I'm talking about my wife. Okay. I'm happy for your mother, actually, for mama. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there, there, there are a lot of similarities, to be honest with you. There are a lot of similarities. Uh, I don't know if you were ever going to ask me about um, about where, about Polish people, the Polish parents, and some other stuff. But yeah, I think we are a little bit running out of time. But I'm just thinking um, it is important to mention because parents-in-law. There, I always said that it's there is this my favorite Yoruba proverb that mm. it's better to marry a bad woman with a good family than a good woman with a bad family. If you could please say mm. Yoruba. Uh, it was. Oma buruku sheepe, ana buruku ne osheni. Yeah, and that particular proverb is works for my marriage. You know. Mm. One thing is this: I can only talk about uh, Polish. What does Polish, this? Uh, Excuse me. What is it? What is How it? Work for your marriage. It works for my marriage because 
I, I'm not saying that my wife is um, is a bad person. Okay. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm actually going to emphasize on the on the on the uh, parent in law part. Okay. Oh. That uh, my my wife is a good woman, a very loving woman, and her parents. I mean, my experience with with my parent in law, yeah, it's been exciting and accommodating. They've been very very good. It's it's something that you would expect from from a normal uh, Nigerian uh, parent in law in a good way. Because I remember there was a time, I mean, they, they advised us if we have any issue, because no, no marriage is rosy. You know, you always have up and down. Whether it is interracial marriage or if it is racial marriage, it's the same, it's the same price. You always have your up and down. And they have always been there for us to support us, to advise us. And this is what will happen in normal Nigerian settings when it comes to the parent in law. I remember there was a time uh, I had issue with my with my wife, oh, okay. and um, she she was very very angry, and then she traveled back home. Okay, she traveled back home. She stayed there for for weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, she stayed there for weeks, and the next thing was that uh, her parents just told her, "We don't have room for you in this house anymore." Okay. You have to go back to your husband. One thing is this: we don't have room for you. This information from excuse me. <laughs> ah, it's me. I'll, don't worry. You can ask if, if you need some lesson. If you need some lesson about interracial marriage, you can ask my wife. She will tell you a lot. Of, okay. Okay. I can lecture your husband. I can lecture your husband, but uh, you can receive some lecture from my wife also. It's oh. okay. So you know that they don't have room for her there, and she has to go back. Uh, to, to her husband. That she has to go back to she has to go back to her husband. They don't have room for, for her there anymore. That if she continues to stay with them, they wouldn't be surprised if another woman would snatch that man away from her. And this is something that a typical Nigerian mother in law would tell you. No, I think it was the grandmother who said it. Yeah, it was whether grandmother or the, the, the parent it's oh. it's still the same thing. Grandparent in law, parent in law, it's the same thing, you know. And they just, they just told her that. So when you think about it, this is something that will happen in normal Nigerian marriage. This is something that a Nigerian uh, parent in law will tell you normally. So I I I, I think I'm enjoying my marriage and relationship because I have the best parent grandparent in law in the world. And generally, I believe that maybe all Polish people are like that. I've never been with any other family before, but my parents in law they got a great family, and they are very, very traditional, just like Nigerians. Yes, yeah, thank you. So how did you, your own parents uh, react when they found out that uh, you are dating an Oibo woman? Ah, there's no more way. Every Nigerian parent will react. It's not because they are racist. They are just looking, uh, trying to protect their children. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then it's uh, a, a Nigerian man that is trying to get married to uh, a Yibo woman or a Nigerian woman trying to get married to uh, uh, a Yibo man. It's just that people want to protect their kids. We've had a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, uh, rumors about, you know, white woman or white man running away with your children, the fact that you will not be able to train your children in your own way, the fact that you will not be able to imbibe them with your own culture and tradition, you know, the fact that you, don't, you are not even going to have a say. Hmm. So this is very uh, scary. Uh, because that's a concern of, uh, because it works both ways with uh, Oibo women as well, that they are concerned okay. about that. But, uh, so how come that there are so many cases that Niger uh, that uh, Oibo women, they run away. I mean, they don't allow the partners to speak their language to the kids. They don't want, uh, you know, to embrace the culture of the par parent, uh, of the partner. They don't want to travel to Nigeria. They don't want... They don't even know much about Nigeria before marrying Nigerians and, you know, all these problems. Where do you think it comes from? So I think it comes from the culture and tradition. Like I said earlier on, Polish people are very, very traditional. 
they they love family they are kind hearted okay big set of people so when you have that kind of people then it will always work out in finland for example maybe so to say it's sometimes you don't see parent in law helping you out when you have any issue with their children you know if there is going to be a divorce they will say it's okay if their kid is fed up of this of the marriage they will just tell her to let go get out of the marriage mm. okay in poland they will encourage you they will advise you okay about different things but in finland probably be the same with other other european country i don't know but that's how it works and uh what can i say another reason why it doesn't really work uh, i need to think uh, it's because people don't get to know each other very well when i say people don't get to know each other it's not all about how many years you have stayed together but i'm talking about getting to know each other culture language and tradition because there is a lot of wisdom and knowledge that will kind of propel your marriage to the surface when when, when in, in your language and tradition and people don't even they don't even want to 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 learn so if you are married to someone that that kind of like you know that hate your culture so much that just want to marry you just because she or he or she wants to have afghan kids for example i'm sorry to use to, to to say this if you are married to someone like that then you should be rest assured that uh, that relationship is not going to last hmm. but when you are married to someone that love you for who you are that respect you for who you are that respect your culture that, that respect your tradition it it works both ways okay then everything will be nice everything will be good everything will work out the way you want it to work out and also learn to set the rules for yourself okay a lot of people just want to get married just for the sake of getting married a lot of people want to get married to a Igbo woman just because they see their friend getting married to a Igbo woman okay <laughs> and a lot of Igbo women also want to marry an african guy because they have a friend that is married to an african guy This is something I have never I have never seen but uh, myself on it not happened among friends of mine but I've heard about stories like Exactly. That. So you know when 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 relationship is built on on that kind of uh, pyramid then you always have a problem. Hmm. You always have a problem. Learn to respect each other's culture and tradition. Learn to know about each other's culture and tradition. and then you will be fine. Excuse me. Yeah, so what about uh, what about your own marriage? Like uh, it's been how many years now? <laughs> well, it 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 feels like 10 years but we've been married for 5 years. When is your wedding uh, anniversary? January 31st. Okay. Correct. Uh, okay. yes. So uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, ma. Uh, please, you said correct. Do you have the same wedding anniversary with uh, your husband? Sorry? Do you, <laughs> do you have the same wedding anniversary with your husband because you said correct? Ah, uh, make make you answer my question. Which question? <laughs> <laughs> Which question? I say what I I what did I say? I was so you see I don't I feel you are making me stress a little bit sometimes. But anyway. Who? you <laughs> ah, don't don't tell your husband that though, because if you are if if another man is making you stress it's a problem no anyway um now i don't know what i was saying <laughs> <laughs> okay but I'm, i was talking about challenges yes yeah, so uh let's let's start uh, from the challenges from, from this part so uh from your and based on your marriage like what are the ch- what 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 kind of challenges you faced hmm okay hold on please uh well like i said no marriage is rosy okay one way or the other we will always marriage is an institution 
where you continue to learn for the rest of your life. You know? And if you don't, if, if there's a marriage where you are not learning again, then the marriage is done. You understand what I'm saying now? If there's nothing to learn about each other again, then it means the marriage is done. Hmm. So, well, I would say that um, in my own marriage, we are both still learning. Uh, 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 Please, I'm sorry. Like it's the egg, Sorry, we have guys. Um, we normally have an hour. left, and I think it's such an important question. So I would like, uh, uh, while you two answer, to be interrupted. So I think. Then this Then this Hold on, please. Hold on, please. Uh, if we have to come back because of this question, I would really, really love to talk about it. Yes, let's, let's, I will just, guys, I will just that end this session for now and then uh, yeah, thank you so right. much. I want you to ask some questions uh, to Walu as well. So uh, I will just end it for now and uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you.